Yo, hello. We finally got the Staff Arcane added to the game. I believe it was the arcane most people were waiting for in general. That or another sword or a lance. Probably a third lance or sword if I had to guess. But all kidding aside, we finally got an arcane staff for pretty much most staves to use at this point, which is really, really nice to see. And we also got the addition of another X skill in the form of Soaring Guidance. Yeah, they crept those pretty fast, didn't they? They started from Death Blow and then went to Remote Sparrow to soaring guidance isn't that quite a jump regardless i'm here to talk about it as usual and you know the drill might as well get right into it arcane charmer the arcane staff that we'll be talking about today a slaying weapon that restores 7 hp to any ally after their own individual combat assuming they survive the weapon grants spectrum 5 a guaranteed follow-up special cooldown charge plus one per attack and it deals seven flat damage per attack and honestly as far as staves go this is probably the most bare minimum it could have gotten spectrum 5 and guaranteed follow-up is more or less just kind of what every arcane starts out with but one of the biggest things that staves were definitely locking for the longest time was some form of special acceleration gimmick but now that it's built into the arcane most units don't really have to worry about charging their specials or getting them off anymore as that was a big point of contention for arguably the longest period of time and this was somewhat subdued by the addition of emblem marth but you would have also had to dedicate one whole slot to it overall i don't think it's a bad weapon i think it's just pretty much bare minimum what they could have given it i would have preferred if they either focused on pure combat or at least made it a bit more useful in its supportive capabilities 7 hp to any ally after their combat is not bad by any means but i think with how the state of enemy phase is at this point i would have much preferred something else entirely Entirely. That being said, can't go wrong with Spectrum 5, guaranteed follow-up, and extra damage. And of course, the special cooldown that you get from it. And would you believe me if I said most staff units really want this arcane? You know, big shocker when most staff units don't have a PRF whatsoever, and the ones that do are probably relatively outdated. Not all of them, of course, but a good amount of them by this point either have a really outdated PRF that they just want to get rid of, or their refine is so far out that it's probably not worth waiting for just to see what would happen. Even though, in retrospect, it would probably be better than the arcane staff for them i would still say give it to units like sarah and young lara shell if you don't really want to wait that long i don't think there's really any downside to it considering how far out they are units like brave camilla and summer hilda also want to ditch their prf for the arcane because one of the biggest things they've lacked is acceleration gimmicks and while this definitely benefits pretty much every single staff in the game i think one of the biggest points of contention when it came to any sort of flying staff or cav is that they didn't have the same gimmicks or skill accessibility that infantry did so they could still get away with a lot of other stuff in my opinion it's probably going to be more than mandatory for them especially since a good amount of the prfs in the arcane charmer tier really are outdated by this point that being said the only ones i'm relatively on the fence for are august bride fjorm and flame they all have supportive gimmicks that are relatively decent in their own right but if you don't particularly value their support then it's definitely worthwhile to give them the new arcane just so they can provide some sort of combative niche august is definitely built for something like summoner duels and given that doesn't really have the biggest appeal anyway and relies on allies dying for you to get the most out of the weapon it probably isn't the most appealing prf to keep but it is still something that you could definitely take advantage of in the right setting bride fjorm has definitely lost a lot of value ever since the addition of freyr although she does also have drive null penalties which is relatively nice on its own right but the biggest claim to fame is definitely the isolation part sometimes it might work sometimes it might not but it will wholly depend on whether or not there is a frayer on an aether raids defense team where in my opinion fjorm is definitely going to be benefiting the most specifically in that game mode it's definitely a lot more inconsistent and you could still argue that maybe not every single team has a frayer but if you would rather not take the risk then you could absolutely ditch the weapon for the arcane and flame does provide drive damage reduction but she is also due for a refine so you could always hold out even though that is near the end of book four so that is going to be a while the only other thing too is that a lot of units just have passive shred at this point so 30 percent drive damage reduction may not be doing a lot for you in the long run especially since she doesn't have a combat niche to go off of so if any of these support effects aren't really appealing to you then absolutely go for the arcane otherwise feel free to keep their prf and for the units that weren't mentioned i would absolutely recommend keeping their prfs they have a lot of effects and niches that most units really 
can't replicate at this time. Cornelia has Sabotage Flash. Elamine has False Start, but that also has its issues with Freyr. But she also has a C slot that is basically just Flames PRF. Alancia grants everybody player phase guaranteed follow up. She has Tempo and gets a bunch of attack and speed. Elise already has a Breath Effect and Slang built into her weapon, on top of just really high damage output. Halloween Flame does the same thing as normal Flame, except she also grants Drive Breath and she has a guaranteed follow up built into her weapon, so she can at least do something more in combat. Loki is a walking, talking tactics tower, which in my opinion is incredibly valuable for something like Aetherade's offense. If you are looking to try an enemy phase niche, you can shut off a lot of high threat nukes with her. Maria grants Drive Miracle. Makoto has built in Cancer Control, which frees up your C slot. Tina can steal buffs. Safi is more or less just Blessable Freyr. And Silk also gives HP to allies after their own combat, but she can also inflict guard and reset specials if she attacks. And in my opinion, these units definitely want to keep their PRF for the time being. Maybe it won't age too well. Maybe we'll get a second arcane staff that makes it way better and more appealing to all of them. But if you are going to give the new arcane to anybody, I would recommend anybody in that specific tier. And going on to the builds, I think the archetype that absolutely benefits the most from the new arcane are infantry, just because they have innate shred and a lot of other skills that allow them to output significantly high amounts of damage. Because the weapon has slang and built-in breath, pretty much every staff can run every single healer special now with relatively no issue. I put Glitter of Light here as well, and this is just on the assumption that it's going to be inheritable, which I imagine it is going to be. I don't think Hortensia is getting two PRF skills to go off of, and considering what it does, it's more or less just another variant of a lot of the other healer specials that we have. But as for skills, a lot of the infantry can run stuff like Ideal and Bonus Doubler because that isn't Staff Lock, which is really, really good for stat swings. You could also give them Still Water if you want to do stuff for ploy effects, which can be beneficial if you you want to be much more mixed utility, especially since the weapon does have the passive healing to allies. Although I will say the biggest benefit to all the infantry is definitely the assortment of B-slots that they do have. Wrathful Tempo makes it so you can consistently get off specials without the worry of guard. Magical No Follow and Attack Res Tempo 4 has innate shred, with the latter also allowing you to get specials off very consistently. Poetic Justice adds extra damage if you're missing a bit of oomph, although in my opinion, if you are an infantry running this staff, I would much rather take a skill that has innate shred just so your damage outputs a lot more consistent and you have dazzling shift which could be used for warping shenanigans that being said magic null follow and dazzling shift can somewhat be replicated from the c slots because you have the likes of infantry null follow and tier 4 oath skills which doesn't exactly do all of what that skill is offering but the b slot can absolutely make up for it in return because tempo also has shred and you're getting null guard and null breath out of it and you could always refine the arcane for dazzling if you are worried about not getting any sort of sweep effect. That being said, if you don't want to run any of that, you can still run tier 4 ploys for extra support and damage output, times pulse so that you can run higher cooldown specials without the worry of guard effects, assuming you aren't running any sort of null guard effect in your kit, insight just grants extra stats which is always nice, infantry pulse can also just be relatively supportive. And generally I would say infantry are probably the best benefactors when it comes to the new arcane, and that's more so due to the fact that a lot of the other archetypes lack inherent options, but they still have stuff that you can use, of course. For example, while the Flyers don't have access to the likes of Innate Shred, they can still run Tier 4 Trace skills or even Dazzle Far Trace, which is a relatively nice skill for units like them. Likewise, if you wanted to provide even more support, you have the ability to run Guidance on top of the Innate Healing, which can be especially beneficial for armors that need to get around a lot of the time in tank. I would say that's probably the next best combination that you have going around, because turns out Guidance is a very very good skill, even almost a year later, and then they put it on an X slot, but I'm getting ahead of myself. You still have the option of running stuff like Sabotage if your res is good enough and you still want to provide more support. Flyers could still also run Catch and Stillwater, as well as Unity if you do want the potential of a higher stat swing. If you don't have a lot of these other premium options, Infantry Speed Tactic is still a good supportive option for giving out no follow-up. Hold is still debuff support, and Oath can be used for warping shenanigans. And while I would definitely say Cavalry don't have as many many inheritable options, they do trade out what little they do have for a bit more combative options. For example, they have the ability to run low speed res because that is infantry and cav locked. They could also take advantage of traces much more often because they have innately higher movement. Although you could still grant extra movement to flyers or other archetypes, they just have it innately, which is super beneficial. They could also run menace skills, which I'm not exactly the biggest 
Phantom Menace goes as is, but for what it's worth, Cavalry do still take advantage of it relatively well. But generally speaking, they are going to be running the same stuff as Flyers for the most part, minus the skills they can't really get. But I think for what they do have, it's still relatively okay. If you are going to use a lot of them as nukes, I would recommend trying to get some sort of shred support going around so that their damage output is relatively consistent, especially for units that have damage reduction with no checks whatsoever. Units like Legendary Alir and Legendary Camilla are great options when it comes to that. And lastly, we have the armors, and despite them wielding a staff, they still have access to all the other armor skills for the most part, which in my opinion is good enough because really the only thing they're ever really going to be doing is trying to survive, which at this point, they probably have a way better fighting chance at it because of the addition of Canny Fighter. I don't think any sort of armor staff at this time is really going to be able to deal a lot of damage, even if they were to run instant specials like Holy Panic or Lights Restraint or any of those. I think they simply lack the damage output for it to matter, and at the end of the day, one of the biggest priorities when it comes to running a far save or a near save is protecting allies so you might want to just bolster that as much as possible they could charge miracle extremely fast because of the weapon has slaying and innate breath you can run stat boosting skills such as distant defense and unity earth fire boost is a great option as well because it also boosts your hp and inflicts guard on the foe so it makes your survivability a smidge higher you could also run saval and shield if you are worried about armor effectiveness and could potentially get one shot by a lot of heavy hitters candy fighter and guard four are probably your best options the former specifically because it also has innate 80 percent damage reduction which most of the time is going to go off because at this point most units have some sort of ability to make a guaranteed follow-up or just have enough speed for it to not matter at this point point. and as long as they're able to survive one hit they're going to be able to get miracle off with no issue as long as the foe doesn't have tempo or guard themselves which most units initiating probably aren't going to have it anyway and really the name of the game is just trying to survive you then run a form skill a bond skill squad ace bx just for stat boosting in your sacred seal or in some specific tech scenarios you can run hardy bearing just against desperation units or units that get dance from firestorm dance 3 that in my opinion is probably one of the better options that you could definitely do but if it's not something you're worried about then i would absolutely take squad ace bx just because it has a lot of stats going into it and as far as builds are concerned i would say this is about it now we get into soaring echo and this is going to be relatively simple because it's soaring guidance in the x slot there's only so many things you could do with it but at the same time freeing up your c slot for a lot of other options is really incredible especially for units that want to be more combative for example now you can run deadly miasma which was shown in the trailer but that was one of the biggest issues going for the skill initially was that it was competing with guidance and while you could definitely argue they didn't do the same thing the utility that you got out of guidance was significantly higher than whatever you could have gotten with miasma at that point but now you don't have to choose which is great you could also run other c slots including snap and hold ashnar can run the x slot and then continually stack debuffs with attack defense hold and could probably debuff a lot of stats by that point you could also run snap which grants extra movement and if you have innate canto then you could run away after that point and for units that don't necessarily have canto built into their weapon you also have it in your b slot which is either going to be something like far trace or dance you can run the tier 4 dance skills because it also has canto 1 built into it and especially for the attune and rearm dancers in my opinion they're probably going to be the best benefactors of soaring echo because of how much they offer innately with their prf dance and I I need to preface this because I think some people may have forgotten or haven't seen the new update. Attuned and rearms can use any X slot and any rearmed or any whatever skill they want, but only they can do this. Let's say you gave Soaring Echo to Legendary Camilla, she would not be able to use her PRFB. The only units that can swap out their X slots and rearms or PRFs or whatever are attuned and rearms, only them which is why I'm mentioning these three specifically. So if you did want to give it to another generic dancer, you could absolutely do that. Although outside the Kanto shenanigans, you could also run this with any sort of unit that has warping, which in my opinion is probably going to be the next best option. Not only will you have the benefit of warping to your allies, but then your allies can warp in front of you and it just becomes a big old game of leapfrog, but it does allow you to get around really easily. Skills such as Oath 4 or inheritable such as Kumo Naginata or Kumo Yumi are great examples of 
of this. And lastly, going back to trace options, you have a lot of inheritables that you could still use for this role or units that just have it built into their PRF, whether that's Far Trace 4, Florid Cane, Florid Knife, or even Tea Time Set. Anything that has built in Canto remaining or Canto plus one or just fixed Canto one, it's going to be a relatively nice option just because you'll still have the ability to provide passive support to your allies. As long as you are able to return back, which is something that Florid Knife and Tea Time Set might struggle with a bit more because of Canto control if you are able to get back to your allies then it's still an incredibly beneficial thing to do and generally speaking most flyers want this skill you can kind of think of it as the far save for flyers because it is that good of an effect and if you are going to give this to any specific flyer then keep this in mind but that's probably going to be about it for the entire guide so let me know down below if you are going to be pulling for these skills these rearms or anything and if you have any sort of staff or flyer that you want to give these stuff to let me know down below and if you want to see more videos like this make sure to like and subscribe and until next time i'll see you later